What is going on, everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today, we are talking PRS McCarty 594 SE. This guitar just came out last week. It is amazing, but also very confusing at the same time. So for those of you that are new to the channel, I am actually kind of new to PRS. Uh, in fact, the PRSs that I currently own are not actually the traditional PRS guitar. So I've got the Fiore up there and I've got the Silver Sky. This 594, it's my first kind of foray into the real interesting, um, this format of guitar where I could really spend some time with it and really uh, enjoy it. And what's interesting about it is it's definitely PRS. It has the things that you want from a PRS for this price point, especially so I would say, let's just get it out of the way. This guitar is amazing. Go buy one. Uh, I should say that there is a link below. You can click on that link and you can go buy it just from Sweetwater. Uh, that is an affiliate link. It does help out the channel if you use it. So that would be awesome. I also will say that PRS sent me this guitar to review. They are not paying me and they are not proofing this video before I upload it. Um, I just, I'm, I'm literally shooting this two hours before I upload it, nobody gets to see it and tell me what to say, just FYI. So let's jump straight into uh, construction of the guitar, how the guitar is made, because PRS is very well known uh, for making a, constructing a good guitar. Uh, mechanically, this guitar is fantastic. When you strum it, uh, it is very loud. The saddles are great. Uh, we've got brass saddles here. We've got brass pins for the bridge and the tailpiece, um, of course it's a set neck. Uh, it is a fantastically constructed guitar. So for those of you that are more traditional and you're thinking about how a guitar uh, should be made, this guitar is awesome, but for you it's gonna be really confusing. Especially since PRS, um, Paul Reed Smith, has recently come out and talked a lot about um, how he feels a guitar should be made and what it should be made of and why that's so important and etc. This guitar is confusing because it's 10 pieces of wood and a veneer. Yeah, you heard me right. It is a three piece body with a maple cap, a veneer, a three piece neck. This is not neck through, even though it looks sort of like a neck through. Um, it three piece neck, with two ears on the side and the fretboard. This is 10 pieces of wood glued together with a veneer on top. So our single piece of one piece body, quarter sawn maple neck brains might just be exploding right now because it makes no sense that this guitar would sound good or feel good or be nice and tight and mechanically really good, but it's fantastic. It is fantastic. There is nothing to fear. Now let's chat neck. So this neck is, first of all, it's amazing. It's awesome. It feels great. I really, 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 really like it. Uh, it is a 10 inch radius fretboard. The fretwork is phenomenal. It is, the, the frets are polished. The ends of the frets are done properly. Now remember this guitar is made by Cortec in Indonesia and it is great. That has been my experience. Uh, what little I have had with PRS is they have all been amazing, the ones that came from Indonesia. So now, here's a couple of confusing things. One might be a little bit confusing for you, and one thing is a little bit confusing for me, yet just mind-blowingly confusing in the way that it's amazing still. Uh, first of all, the neck profile. If you are a person who says, I cannot stand a big baseball bat neck, the 59 Les Paul is not for me, I'm the same. I have never liked that 59 Les Paul sort of big round back kind of neck. Yet, that's what this is, and it's fantastic. I don't know what's different about it. I can't explain it exactly. But if you're the kind of person who doesn't like that kind of neck, confusing as it may sound, you should try this guitar. It is very, very good. It's so comfortable. I'm a thumb hooker. I like to hook my thumb over the top. I can't normally do that on a big neck. I'm not a big neck guy because my hands are just average, you know? It just, but it just feels so good. The other 
confusing thing uh, about this guitar neckwise um, is when I got it, I pulled it out of the box, I checked everything, and there's zero neck relief. It's 100% flat. Now, I've been kind of talking about this lately that I think it's really a cool way to set up a guitar with a zero neck relief. You can do it if the fretwork is fantastic and the rest of the guitar is right. Do I think that it can be done on every guitar? Probably not. You have to have really good fretwork, but that speaks to the quality of this instrument. It's very, very good. Uh, so, confusing as that sounds, 100% flat neck, plays great, sounds great, no fret buzz, no problem, just play the guitar, pull it out of the box and do it. Before we go on, I want you to listen to this guitar. I want you to hear it. Uh, I want you to hear it clean. And then we're going to get into a couple of things about this guitar. It sounds great. It's awesome. But these pickups are a little confusing. So listen to it and then we'll chat about that. It, it sounds awesome. Now that's just clean. Uh, I tell you what, why don't you listen to it uh, a little dirty too. <laughs>
these pickups are really, really low output, like 7.3 and 7.6, I think is what I measured on these particular pickups. The confusing thing, which is not confusing at all, they sound great, they're super low output. Uh, they have an interestingly weird, I'm gonna, I guess for me personally, I'm gonna say it's weird, this hollow sort of sound that I've never been able to identify why that happens with PRS guitars. And I think I figured it out. It's because of the scale length of the guitar and where the pickup is within that scale length. Uh, being this wonky, uh, what is this, 24.594 scale length, that's what it's called, 594, it's a little shorter, but a little longer than a normal PRS. And it, oh no, it's shorter. Shorter in general, it's shorter, yeah. So shorter scale kind of thing, it feels great. It's nice and slinky, plays great. But because of that, the distance between the pickups is gonna be different. The distance from the pickup to the saddle is gonna be different. And of course, as your scale length shrinks, your fret's all kind of accordion together too, right? So uh, it just changes sonically the properties of the instrument. And I really think, I, I kind of, I finally kind of figured it out. For me personally, I think it's the scale length that changes the way this pickups sound. That's why PRS's sound the way they sound. Also the pickups, he does things that are, are pretty cool. Now, that's kind of one confusing thing out of the way for me that I think I kind of figured out. But I really like it, and I'm, I'm really, it's growing on me as a unique sound. This guitar is unique. The, the PRS sound in general, that PRS sound in general is unique. And I'm, now that I understand it, or I think I'm trying to understand it, I'm, it's really growing on me. The other weird thing about this thing is, and I want you to hear this in just a second, is the coil splitting in these pickups is not very good. Take a listen. Typically, PRS is really good at this coil splitting thing because what they do is they take a resistor and they put it on one side of the wire that goes to the coil split switch so that when you pull this, it doesn't automatically turn the one coil all the way off. It leaves it a little bit on so that it doesn't volume drop near as much. With this particular guitar, I don't feel like it's as good as it normally is from PRS. I think there's a technical reason for that. When you have a very low output humbucker, which these are, no matter what you do, when you cut half of it off, you end up with 3.5K and like 2.3 Henry's or less of inductance. And so if half of the volume goes away, your, our ear perceives it as this huge volume drop. Now the resistor offsets some of that, but because the pickup is so low output to begin with, it just doesn't leave you with a whole lot. So I think no matter what they did with these particular pickups, they're not gonna coil split as well. Still great, they sound good, the tone is great, but the difference between the full humbucker and the half a humbucker with the little resistor on the one side is not near as good as some of their other guitars. The way we get around this with our center punch humbucker is, we wind the two coils. Uh, we have a proprietary sort of recipe that we go for that when you coil split this, instead of the pickup going in half, it goes about in 60-40. So our ear doesn't perceive the volume drop. So our center punch pickups are much better at this than these pickups are. But you also have to go a little bit higher output. So we're at like nine and a half K or so to do that. Um, they're available on the website. You can check them out. Um, if you wanted to upgrade this guitar, but honestly, unless you are very specifically wanting to coil split, I would leave these pickups alone. Overall, 
This thing is a hit. The scale length is unique and it makes it really fun to play. The quality of the instrument is PRS quality. The pickups are fantastic. If you don't want, if you're not a big coil split guy, what I think with that is you might just have to like play with your amp, play with your settings and stuff and find a way for that to work for you if you want to be a coil split guy. If you don't, leave the buttons down all the time and just play the guitar. It's really, really good. Um, and it sounds great and it's got that unique PRS sound. And at this price point, I don't know that there is true competition in this area. Uh, you know, the, the higher end Epiphone Les Pauls are probably pretty cool, but they're heavier. The scale length is different. They're gonna sound different. And workmanship, I don't know. You'd have to hold them right next to each other and see, but this thing is pretty hard to beat. Anyway, as confusing on some levels as this guitar is, I think it is amazing. If you wanna try one, there's a link to it in the description, go get it. So thanks to PRS for sending this to me and letting me try it. And uh, I guess we will see you tomorrow when we shoot our podcast live, cause we do that on Tuesdays. And then we have news on Wednesdays and we have a live stream on Thursdays and we're putting out a video on Friday these days too. So um, guitar related video every day. So hit the subscribe button and the like button and the little bell so that you get notified when we come out with a new video. Also, if you want to directly support Dylan Talkstone, you can check the links below and go to Dylan Talkstone and buy some pickups because that's what we really do. We'll see you in the next video.